I'm Jean Meserve, and we are marking an important anniversary. 20 years ago, three men embarked on a journey, a journey to the International Space Station, where they became the first full-time inhabitants. We are now marking two decades of habitation, cooperation, and investigation. Today, we're going to be talking about what's been done up there, what it has meant, and we're going to do that by talking to the crew of Expedition One and some of those who supported them. This conversation is brought to you by the team at NASA and by the Space Foundation with the support of Boeing. We had hoped to do this conversation in person at the Space Symposium, but COVID. So let me introduce to you our guests today, joining us virtually. First, the members of the crew. We have the commander uh, who is with us, Bill Shepard. He joins us from Virginia. Also with us from Russia, his crewmates, Sergei Krikalev and also Yuri Gizenko. Also joining us from Texas, a man whose vision and management and oversight was crucial to the success of the mission, George Abbey. He, was, he is the former director of the Johnson Space Center. And also joining us is Ginger Carrick of NASA, who was the Russian training integration instructor for Expedition One. Great to have you all with us here today. George Abbey, I'd love to start with you um, and get a sense of what you hoped for from this mission. What was your goal? What did NASA think it would get out of this? Well, I thought it was uh, very important that uh, we uh, partner with our Russian colleagues. Uh, we were uh, working on a space station and had been working on it for some period of time and uh, we're not too successful. So <clears throat> we went through a redesign and uh, I felt it was important to bring uh, our Russian colleagues in and make them a part of the program. And uh, actually the program started with the shuttle mirror, which was the uh, Russian space station. And uh, that gave us an opportunity to get some experience on space stations as we were not flying a space station. And uh, we were able to work with the Russians and do that on the, sh on the mirror program. At the same time, partnering with them on the international space station and uh, was uh, turned out to be an excellent partnership. And I think uh, our success was really in a large part due to the fact that we had that partnership. And uh, so as we worked in through the shuttle mirror program, uh, we were looking ahead to the International Space Station and finally being able to get that first element up. And then of course, get the crew up, uh, which uh, came about a year and a half after that first element went up. So. Uh, I was looking forward to that day and uh, uh, with great expectations and uh, great hope that we would finally get the program underway and get that first crew up there, which uh, we did. And we have, we were fortunate to have all three crew members with us this morning. And I wanted to ask you about these three crew members. Why were these three picked for Expedition One? Well, I think they were picked by, uh, based on their experience and their backgrounds. Uh, we wanted to make sure that first crew uh, was an experienced crew and uh, it was going to be a, a first a first time in space with the space station. And we wanted uh, someone who had been up there before and also could work in that environment. And uh, if there were problems, could deal with them. And uh, we selected a crew where we had high confidence with the three crewmen that they would be able to do that. And uh, that turned out to be uh, uh, certainly the case. And we were fortunate to have all three of them up there as we went through that, that first step on Expedition 1. Um, Ginger, you ended up working with these guys for years, getting them ready for this mission. Would you agree with this was the right combination of personalities and skills? Oh, absolutely. From day one, you know, you, you got to remember this is the first time we were training a crew for the space station. So we were building it as we went along. And um, all three of the crew members were quick to identify gaps in the support plan that we had put forward, not only for training, but for operations. Um, so they were the perfect people. Um, it took the courage for them to step out and try to um, establish a new training paradigm, a new operations par paradigm, and they proved to be successful once they executed their mission. Um, Sergey, I'd like to ask you and Shep both. You were both uh, come out of a military background where you were trained to view one another as adversaries. 
here you're put in a situation where you're going to interact cooperatively. Was that a difficult transition or did that come naturally to both of you? So, Sergey, why don't you go ahead? Okay, uh, at first uh, I came not from military background. So that's one point. And second, maybe most important, that this was not uh, the first experience. Uh, my first first uh, space flight was uh, international mission together with French uh, cosmonaut. But also before that, before uh, this mission, I was uh, trained and flew twice on shuttle. Uh, first first flight was on STS-60, and we were trained together. Uh, Charlie Bolden was the commander of this mission. And my second flight on shuttle was actually first assembly mission. So first station assembly mission, STS-88 with uh, Bob, Command, uh, Bob Caban as a commander. So <clears throat> it was not uh, uh, the first experience. And actually, uh, even before us, many years ago, was very good example of good uh, uh, relations and good partnership uh, start from uh, Soyuz Apollo. So we were based on the previous experience and uh, we were ready for good cooperation and that's why I think everything went very smooth from my point of view. Now, Shep, you did have a military background. I'm right there, aren't I? Yeah, actually, uh, Yuri and I were really the two military guys. Um, jumping way ahead in the answer, uh, one, of my, one of my most interesting moments with Yuri in space was looking at the Earth and he was saying, okay, I was a MiG-21 pilot and I was stationed here and half an orbit later, I would say, okay, I was a Navy SEAL and we were here and here and here. And that, that was a really interesting dialogue. But um, I think uh, my personal interest in being part of this crew was to try and put the space station on the footing of either the early uh, space voyages where we did not have a lot of contact with the ground and that seems to be seemed to me to be much more like uh, being on a ship or a submarine than flying an airplane so NASA had a shuttle program which was basically airplane flying and I thought we were doing something different with space station that's why I really wanted to be in the first crew um, I went to Russia I had uh, certain uh, views on how the partners should interact, uh, and, and fortunately, uh, Yuri and Sergey helped me uh, maybe change my views quite a bit on what I thought was the right way to do things, and so uh, I was really fortunate to have both those guys on the crew because they taught me a lot. Um, Yuri, from your perspective, what was the biggest challenge here? Was it one of language? Was it one of culture? Was it the technological integration? Yes, we had some difficulties as we just started training for the mission. And these were difficulties not between us, between our relationships, business relations, but even during our preparation, it was constantly uh, we are breaking up a little bit here. Yuri, скажите, пожалуйста, еще раз, потому что последний раз сразу не было слышно. Ну, у нас не было при нашей во время нашей подготовки нормальных учебных условий. У нас при нашем Yes, uh, we did some difficulties, but not in interaction as friends or as uh, crew members here, future crew members. Uh, we had some difficulties in preparation because we were just starting and uh, we didn't have all the proper materials or the simulators were not up to par. We were just starting out and that was a difficulty in training, not in interaction. 
Но с а другой ты... стороны, это было интересно. С другой стороны, это было интересно, потому что нам приходилось участвовать. Jane, if I might, if, if I might suggest, why don't you ask Ginger if she can explain what brain sharing was? Brain sharing. Yeah. Okay. We might pull up. Hey, my apologies. You're just breaking up a little bit. I think Olga's having a little bit of trouble uh, making out what you're saying. Ginger, you want to hop in here? Oh, sure. So what, one, one of the things that Yuri was talking about was it was difficult to train when you didn't have training materials, you didn't have all the right simulations. So we spent a lot of time with the hardware owners, the hardware developers. And there was one particular instance where this brain sharing um, um, name came to be is Shep had gone and met with some one of the um, hardware developers and was asking a series of questions, you know, three or four questions. And then Sergey was a little late. So Sergey comes in and he looks at the hardware and immediately same three or four questions. And we're just like, oh my God, they're sharing a brain now, these two. <laughs> um, I, I'm curious about the language issue. What was the language that you spoke of? And Sergey, you want to weigh in? I, I, I wanted to add maybe what Chef said that uh, shuttle was uh, closed to airplane in the, in the way of operating because it was most of the time in com. Uh, but um, actually, with us, uh, Yuri and I had uh, previous experience of flying on Mir, and uh, uh, communication system and way how we uh, operate on the station was very similar to what we expected to be on uh, ISS, on f especially for first expedition when we have very limited com. We had to make decision ourselves in case of malfunction, and we have to be more or less self-sufficient. Uh, so, uh, as I said, uh, it was very interesting also because uh, a lot of new things uh, have to happen on this first mission, and that's why we uh, we, are, we are near exactly what Chef said. It's more like submarine or ship in, in uh, at sea. Um, language. Uh, I, in talking to to all of you, can see that the. Um, that Shep and Ginger spoke, both speak some Russian, Yuri and Sergey, you speak English. What was the language uh, on the International Space Station? What did you speak? And I would presume that in that kind of a situation, you really have to be thinking in the right language, that you can't be going through the translation process. Yeah, I think we went back and forth quite a bit. Yuri, go ahead. Uh, uh, wait, wait. For me, at the beginning, I had some challenges with uh, uh, English language. That's only for me. Uh, I uh, think Sergei uh, didn't have any challenges with this one. Uh, but um, uh, have, uh, our uh, English classes with uh, teachers in uh, Russia, in the uh, US, and uh, had explanation. Uh, uh, Explain explanation, explanation about some systems, and uh, after several uh, months, I mean, like, in, a, in a year, it, that was not very important for me to uh, speak uh, in English or just listen to classes. Very, that was not. And I think the same was for Chef. Yeah, I I thought initially that uh, because. The United States had an agreement with the other partners where we said English was going to be the standard language. Uh, that would be the way to go. But I got to Russia and was working with many of the engineers, technicians, and managers. Some of these people helped to put Sputnik in space and launched Yuri Gagarin, and these people were still there. And so I thought, I said, well, you know, we're not going to completely invert the Russian space system because we like English. But even beyond that, um, in order for, it's not enough to know what the Russians did. It, the, the key element of making the space station work was to understand why the Russians approached problems a certain way. And the only method by which we were really going to get to that was if we could talk to all these people in Russian. So, uh, that became the way we operated. If we could pull up uh, picture number four, I'll show you uh, kind of one of the crutches that we use to get by that, if we can do some screen sharing here. Yeah, what this is, is gonna be a picture of me in one of the training mock-ups and a big sheet of paper to the right is a 
a big uh, schematic drawing of this, the air purification system that I'm working on. And our effort early on in the space station training was to create very understandable graphic diagrams of all the systems that we had to use. And I, I Ginger, correct me if I'm wrong, I think we still use these today. Yes, we still use those today. And for me, that was a big help because uh, a lot of times I could go through class and I, I could look at the diagram and even if I didn't get 100% what the instructor was trying to teach us, I could, I could make sense out of it by referring to the diagram. So um, Ginger or Shep, um, I'm curious as to whether the Russians had a very different approach to training. If there were things that you learned uh, from participating in Russia um, that might not have been obvious to, to you previously. Yeah, um, you know, they broke down lessons into theoretical and practical, and you would get all of your theoretical lessons and then do your practical lessons. Um, they had a less of a reliance on diagrams and documentation because they had the people teaching the classes were experts and knew that information inside and out. Whereas on the U.S. side, we were all starting up there. A lot of the instructors were young. I was young at that time. And um, so we were developing materials and we didn't have the expertise. So it was um, interesting to see the dichotomy between the U.S. approach and the Russian approach. Um, but we learned a lot um, from each other. And I think each of us adapted our uh, approaches so that we were both better off um, in the end. Sergey, to hear your perspective from the Russian side, did the Americans have something to teach you? Uh, actually, Ginger is 100% uh, correct. We were learning from each other. And um, returning back to your previous question, uh, what was the language we uh, Shep was speaking some Russian, we were speaking some English, so we called this mixture of languages Runglish. And that's what we use uh, during the mission. We actually uh, had this name when I was training for shuttle, shuttle flight. And actually for us, it was very interesting exchange of experience because uh, we were, uh, Ginger is right, we were based more on theoretical knowledge of the system and preparation for long duration flight. Uh, was such that we uh, we were not able to repeat uh, every step for several times uh, getting ready for the flight because flight itself is uh, long and uh, you cannot do kind of usual rehearsal. But in shuttle it's possible to do and uh, training for short duration flight is little different. You know, but what we learned that uh, we can use more uh, computer uh, computer generated uh, lessons or mock up uh, simulators. Um, before that, computer was not as available, and we, we had to have all this diagram in our head. We, we had to understand how the system worked. Uh, and it actually had some advantages because if you are working in a stressful environment in a limited amount of time, sometimes it's better to have everything in your head, although it's more difficult to. Uh, to build up this knowledge. But uh, as we said, we were learning from each other. We tried to share our experience, experience of uh, mere missions. And we were learning from, from all this uh, computer supported training from uh, US side. And I think at the end, uh, now we have some kind of mix, uh, mixed system of training crew for now. Actually, maybe one more difficulties we, we had in the beginning. No one exactly knew what what kind of knowledge we will need in flight. So for this purpose, in case of this uncertainty, we had to have more information that we really needed because no one knew how much information exactly we need. And I see now that training for subsequent missions and especially now uh, allow people to, to learn only what they really need for the flight. Uh, in our case, we learn uh, with some margin, and it was really interesting. Um, Yuri, did you want to weigh in on what you might have learned from the American side? I agree with Sergey. I want to show you that we didn't learn much from the U.S. side. 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 
Слушай, Юра, у тебя там динамиков нет рядом, потому что такое впечатление, что тебя запирает сигнал. Посмотри, если динамики рядом есть, куда-нибудь в сторону. Нет микрофона. Нет, нет, нет. It was actually interesting to work together because we were learning from each other and different approaches helped us to understand the stations best. Um, George, was this exactly the kind of synergy you wanted to see come out of this international mission? Yes, it was. It really, uh, really turned out just to be what I had hoped it to be. And uh, we had worked with uh, our Russian colleagues before on Apollo Soyuz, uh, the first uh, joint docking mission. And so I had confidence that we would be able to work with them and it would really turn out to be a, a good uh, a good partnership for us and that we uh, could learn from them and, and hopefully they could learn from us and between uh, our two part, our two nations we would uh, come up with a great space station and I think this crew uh, made it all happen. Hey Gene, one important part, point that Sergey touched on that I want to I want to double down on. Um, in Houston we had extensive simulators for the shuttle and the, the crew spent hundreds of hours in these machines. And quite often we would be sitting waiting for the computers come up because the sim had crashed. And it happened like twice a day. And it took about 30 or 40 minutes to reboot the computers and get everything running again. When I got to Star City and I asked the instructors there about their Soyuz simulator and how often they had to reboot it because it had crashed, the answer was, well, Uh, we do this maybe once a year. And so when I finished the space station and I came back to Johnson, I was trying to get the point across to senior management that the way the Russians design some things is really good and we need to learn from this. Unfortunately, uh, you know, space technology being what it is, we have, a, we have a fascination, particularly in the States, with the most complex things we can build I'm not sure that's the right answer. Um, George Abbey, I have to give you a chance to respond to that. Oh, I think I would go along with what Chef says. I think uh, the Russian uh, design approach is, uh, is a very good one. And uh, it, uh, they, uh, they come up with very reliable equipment and very reliable systems. And uh, I think we learn from them. And uh, hopefully we can adapt uh, some of those lessons and incorporate them into our spacecraft, but uh, yes, I agree with Shep. Uh, Ginger, uh, I'd love to talk to you a little bit about your feelings after working with these guys for years, um, they're about to take off. Um, tell me that story of what that was like and what you felt seeing them launch. Yeah, you know, I spent four years of my life, wherever this crew was, that's where I was. If we were in Baikonur, Kazakhstan, looking at the service module before it launched, I was right there with them. If we were in Florida, if we were in um, Huntsville, Alabama, or Houston, and, or Star City, Russia. So um, we formed quite the bond. Um, and so on launch day, um, I got to go to their launch, and it was a foggy day. And I remember watching them walk up the stairs of the launch vehicle. And as soon as that hatch shut, I started hyperventilating. And I know the spacecraft, I knew that they were going to be safe, but something inside me said, my family is going on a rocket and I could not handle it. And one of the Russian um, high ranking military officials noticed that, put his arm around me and started parting the crowd to try to bring me to a closer view. And as he's doing that, he says, at the mama equipage, at the mama equipage, it's the mother of the crew, get out of the way. And uh, <laughs> But he put me in a spot where I could watch them and I was reassured that everything was going to be okay. But it was weird because, you know, we were a family of four and three of them were going to space. And so the three of you arrive at the space station, love to get your first impressions. Sergey, what did you feel? What did you see? What did you smell as you arrived there? Uh, actually, um, the service model of International Space Station Uh, is very similar to a uh, core module of Mir station uh, uh, mechanically. So the only difference I felt that we, we came to the station and it was very new, very clean uh, and not completely empty, but much emptier than uh, 
this uh, space happened to be after several months of uh, crew living there. So I, I remember uh, we, we were discussing with uh, designers uh, on the ground that maybe the table we had in the middle of this uh, big compartment uh, can be not assembled as a full part, maybe only part of it can exist. But when we came, there was no table. We switch on lights, and the first um, thing we need to do is prepare uh, our TV downlink uh, to have a teleconference uh, from the station. And we start to uh, search for, for connectors. Uh, and it was typical operation, but it was uh, very memorable. Switching on light for the first time when we came to uh, almost dark station, switching on light, and it became very light. Good water. <coughs> and, and, and trying to uh, make hot water because for two days we were flying on Soyuz, we had only snacks and uh, cold cold food. So we knew how the system is built and start to activate uh, hot water to have a hot drink on the station. Right, Yuri is right. Um, Yuri, the, the job of, of your crew primarily was to set up house. Uh, on the space station. Can you talk to us a little bit about, about that, what you had to do when you got there, besides getting hot water for something to drink? Вначале я хотел бы сказать, что когда мы пристыковались, мы не сразу открыли люк на станции с Сергеем, когда проверили герметичность, начали открывать люк, а он не открывается, его присосало. минут Наверное, пять, наверное, там убирались ногами. Думаем, как же так, прилетели, а на станцию попасть не можно. Well, uh, first I want to say that when we just got there, uh, we were not able to open the hatch right away. We had struggle with Sergei, with our legs, with our arms, uh, for maybe five minutes. And we were thinking, how come? We just arrived to the station, but we are not able to get in. А когда мы попали уже на станцию, вот как Сергей сказал, включили свет, подогрели воду, туалет расконсервировали. И я помню, как шеф сказал, ну все, свет есть, вода есть, туалет есть, жить можно. And uh, when we finally opened the hatch and we got in, as Сергей said, we turned on the light, we got some hot water, uh, we activated the toilet. And I remember uh, chef said, now we can live, we have Light, we have hot water and we have a toilet. <laughs> hey, Jeannie, uh, jumping in again, I think uh, history may forget our first cargo ship came up about 10 days after we arrived. And uh, Yuri did a great job of, of docking it because it was supposed to find us automatically. Um, but it came up and it was acting very strangely. And, and Yuri flew it in by hand. Maybe he can tell a little bit. Yuri and Sergey can tell a little bit about how that went. It was a pretty big deal. Uh, yeah, it was unusual uh, docking because, as Shep said, uh, this cargo vehicle is supposed to uh, approach and then dock in automatic mode. But when it uh, came for about 100 meters uh, range, then it started to, uh, to wobble and searching for for, for docking, and uh, this uh, oscillation became so big that it started to be uh, dangerous. And fortunately, we had the uh, opportunity uh, to manual control it. So we had to switch to manual control, and Yuri was uh, controlling it by, by hand controllers installed in the station. But next uh, issue was that uh, lens on the camera camera that was used for uh, for aligning the vehicle was fogged and we didn't know what is this fog is it kind of glue or something else stick uh, to the window of this camera or something else so uh, we call this uh, remote control of the vehicle mode is uh, tele teleoperation mode uh, but uh, the problem was that because Yuri cannot see uh, station and target well. I was jumping to window and we have what we said tele tele operation mode because I was looking out in the window, uh, give some guidance to Yuri and Yuri was trying to control it, try to use some image on the uh, monitor and some information that he got from 
me because I was looking directly uh, to approaching vehicle. So finally, we were able to station keep uh, this uh, vehicle very close to the station and on sunlight, this fog on the lens uh, came out and we were able finally to dock. It was very unusual way of docking vehicle. But fortunately, we had very many layers of redundancy and one of these layers worked out well and we were able to do docking safely. And maybe Shep can add something because he was monitoring and recording this, uh, looking at us jumping uh, to the control panel, to window and back. Yeah, I think it's one of the issues of, if you will, the culture. Russian designs put in many ways to get things done. Uh, there's lots of redundancy, and in some programs, the, the U.S. does not have as much, and I think that's one of the things in the future we need to pay a lot of attention to. Um, Chef, can you tell us what the average day would have been like? This was obviously an unusual day when you had this docking drama. But what about the average day? What did you guys do? Did you have assigned responsibilities? Did you all do a little bit of everything? How did it go? Well, I got to say that I don't think you could say we had an average day, at least not too many of them. But this was good because uh, we were up there to get a lot of work done. And every day seemed to have its own set of challenges. Uh, we got up 6.30ish uh, in the morning. I like to get a cup of coffee and read on the laptop or the printouts Very kind of what, what, what the ground wanted us to do. But from then on, it was kind of free, free for all. The one thing I did enjoy was uh, we got together around the, the galley table. We, another story about that. But three times a day, we made a point to have our meals together. And that was a, that was a big part of keeping everybody kind of on the same plan of the day. But I'll let, I'll let Yuri and Sergey talk about their perspectives. Yuri, tell us what you thought. Yeah. Я вот хочу сказать, вот у меня вот собственное ощущение после 20 лет, что вот мы первые несколько недель только и делали, что постоянно работали, работали и работали. Well, uh, my impression after looking back, you know, 20 years back, uh, seems like the first couple of weeks we were just working and working and working. Особенно первую неделю мы, по-моему, побрились на станции дня через три, четыре или пять даже первый раз. Больше, больше Юр. Мы не сразу еще и бритвы нашли. Especially uh, the first week, I think uh, the first shaving we did, we shaved probably like three days after we arrived, or maybe even later, because we were not able, able to find the, 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 the equipment. Great. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Но все равно это было очень интересно. Это было очень интересно. But it was extremely interesting, very interesting. Um, George, I'm curious if there ever was tension between what the United States wanted the crew to be doing and what the Russians wanted the crew to be doing. No, uh, not surely uh, there wasn't uh, any of that kind of tension. I think uh, having uh, worked with the Russians on the mirror program, uh, the shuttle mirror program, we uh, had developed a lot of confidence in each other and uh, confidence when they made a decision that uh, they exercised all of everything that needed to be done to make sure it was a good decision. And so really that, that uh, those missions that we flew to the mirror and working with the Russians in their control center uh, really gave us a good foundation for moving into the assembly flights and that first flight with the International Space Station. So uh, initially on, on the shuttle mirror, we uh, had some tensions, but that had been well worked out by the time we were doing uh, mission, uh, the first mission of the International Space Station. Hey, Gene, I got to jump in on that because early on, the two control centers flying the ISS was kind of new for both of them. And about for the first maybe two or three weeks of things, occasionally we would get conflict, conflicting marching orders, uh, things that Houston had said, and then the control center in Moscow changed later. And, this, and it would go back and forth 
almost orbit by orbit sometimes. And I, I got really frustrated one day and I got on the radio and both control centers can hear you when you can talk to a ground station and said, look, uh, we're the International Space Station. You guys have to coordinate one plan and give it to us. And that's the one we'll do. We're not doing one plan for Moscow and one plan for Houston. They, they just needed that little reminder and I was happy to give it to them. And I got to say, that was my happiest day in space. <laughs> so you guys were living together in pretty tight quarters up there. Um, how did you get along? I mean, were there tensions that developed? Were you ever able to have privacy? Was everybody chummy? Who wants to weigh in first? Uh, station, station was not big at that time, but I think it was uh, still bigger than shuttle, uh, shuttle uh, cockpit. Uh, and uh, we had enough room to have, have at least some privacy. Uh, but uh, really, we don't need much privacy because we were working together. And I would like to return back maybe to previous question when Shep said that we didn't have a uh, normal day because every day was uh, special. And I also remember another interesting thing when we were still on the ground preparing for the flight and we were shown uh, tools uh, we are going to have uh, on board the station. One of the big tool was, I don't don't know how it's called in English, but uh, like a big chunk of metal, like you, you open the door or uh, safe, but uh, Shep was laughing, saying, why do we need this big, big uh, heavy instrument in there? We said, well, Shep, let's take it just in case. And I think maybe not in first, but on the second week when we were installing one of the equipment uh, that's supposed to take like 15 minutes to install. And we, when we had the training for this installation on the ground, it was very simple. We would just put it in, make several connections and put... Uh, four bolts to, to hold this uh, piece of equipment uh, on the station. Maybe station was deformed a little, little bit from uh, ground position and flight position, but really we need to use all heavy tools to to make this uh, piece of equipment fit in, in the proper place. And it was almost like, I don't know, special adventure. So every day, day was very adventurous. Um, Ginger, we talked a little bit about how you felt seeing these guys go off, that you were the mother of the crew. Are you still close with these guys? Oh, very much so. Um, every time I'm in town, well, in Russia, I always try to find uh, Yuri and Sergei. Um, I think I saw Yuri a couple of Novembers ago when I was in Star City. Um, and Sergei makes more frequent trips out to the US. Um, so he was able to meet my fiance his last trip and um, um, I'm hoping that um, they can both make it for the wedding in March if travel allows and Shep is going to be giving me away. Um, so yes, we still stay in touch. We have formed, I think, what are lifelong friendships. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm very thankful to NASA for giving me a job that allowed me not only to support the Expedition One crew and their mission, but also to make such great friends. Um, we're coming down to our last minutes, and I'd like to get from each of you your thoughts on what the big takeaway from your mission was. Um, Chef, why don't we start with you? Uh, I think Space Station, particularly Expedition One, uh, set the tone for how crews need to operate in space. Uh, from that uh, we can fly a really big, complex vehicle, lots of international partners. And with the right ground support and training, we can figure out how to make it all work. I think it's the blueprint for uh, larger expeditions and going certainly to the moon and probably beyond that to Mars and elsewhere. Yuri, big takeaway from the mission? I think I'm agree with Shep. And I think the main goal of our expedition was to prepare the station to be able to get the second, third, fourth, uh, yes, uh, I just will join a chef here and want to add that the main um, objective for our mission was to prepare the station for the next cruise, uh, for crew number two, crew number three, and so forth. 
Хочу сейчас добавить, вот сейчас на борту станции 63-64-я экспедиция, 63-я вот сегодня будет расстыковываться и спускаться в Курсовский And I just wanted to add that right now on the station we have already crew number 63. This is mission number 63. And 64 there as well. And 63 is going to land today. 64 missions. Sergey, your thoughts on reflecting on your mission? Well, uh, as we said at that time, that uh, goal of our mission was to make station alive because when we came, most of the system was shut down, some of them was not even installed, and some of them installation and activation of the system was uh, life critical. So if we wouldn't be able to do this on time, we had to uh, stop mission earlier and return back home. So we, uh, as a crew, we need to be very reliable, and I think our crew was able to do what we were supposed to do. Uh, but I, I think our goal was not only prepare station for future experiments. I think uh, uh, space station program itself is very big and interesting technical experiment. Uh, what we did on Expedition 1 was big technical experiment because we were put some things together, we were activating them in uh, unusual uh, situation. Uh, as we said, some of the hardware never met each other on the ground and uh, we, we had to install it in space for the first time and not every time it was smooth. So I think uh, it was uh, very interesting technical and organizational experiment. And the result of this experiment we are using up to now, and as Yuri said, 63 and 60, Expedition 63 and 64 is flying now. So the result of our first technical and organizational experiment was successful. Ginger? Um, I'd like to build on what Sergei Shepanuri said with uh, with respect to the, the the marvel of construction that is the International Space Station. I think they were able to set the tone, the Expedition One crew and the International Space Station program, that the world should follow. You know, when you look in the news today and you see um, our countries not getting along or other countries not getting along, and yet when you work on a common goal, even if something as complicated as the International Space Station, we have proven to the world that when you're joined in a common goal that you can accomplish anything. So I think the ISS should be the model for how the world should be getting along, how the world should be um, making bigger and better things together. George Abbey, let me give the last word to you on what this mission accomplished and what it's meant. I was convinced that uh, before this mission that if we're going to explore space, we need to do that working uh, internationally. That it, uh, it's much better to work with partners, and I think this first crew proved that. Uh, as Sergey was saying, we had uh, components and systems that were built all over the world, and they came together for the first time in space, and this crew was able to deal with them and uh, put them together and make them all work. And uh, that found, provided a good foundation to build on the uh, 20 years that have followed on the space station. And as Ginger said, this is a model, should be a model for what we should do in the future. Because uh, as we look going beyond Earth orbit, going back to the moon and maybe someday to Mars, we ought to be doing it internationally and do it in the same way that we're working together on the International Space Station. It is a, truly a model for how we can work with other countries and not only with Russia, but all the partnerships that we form with the, the International Space Station. And with that, I want to thank you all for your participation today, and thank you all for your contributions to science and cooperation uh, internationally. Uh, and on behalf of NASA and the Space Foundation, thanks to all of you who are watching us today. There will be more ISS 20, 20th anniversary programming uh, on NASA television and also on the Space Foundation's new online digital platform, Space Symposium 365. You can learn more about that by going to www.spacesymposium365.org. I'm Jean Mazur. Please, all of you, stay well.